Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing Final Girls, written by Riley Sager. Here's the book. This continues my journey through Riley Sager's catalogue. I can't say I enjoyed this totally, and I get the feeling that at some stage, a few years ago maybe, a bunch of authors all decided I'm going to write a book about Final Girls, and Final Girls being survivors of mass killings. It seems like there are so many books popping up about that. I think I've read about four or five of them now. This is not the best that I've read with that theme. There are some great twists in here though. Riley Sager is an author that writes great twists and he seems a master at that to be honest. Not many authors can do that consistently, but Riley Sager's twists always surprise and they're always well written and well timed. I just wish that the characters in this book were more balanced. To me, the characters are a miss, and there are certain parts of the characters that do work well, but there are other characters that don't work well at all, and certain changes in characters, I think, that were too extreme and maybe just not timed very well in the book. But overall, still an okay book. Not my favourite book from this author, but still a worthwhile read, I think. Quincy is the main character in this story, and Quincy is a final girl, meaning she survived a mass killing somewhere, and she just survived, I think. She was saved just at the last moment by a police officer who killed the assailant. And Quincy and this officer have been sort of friends ever since. Not close friends, but they connect every six months or so, and it's usually the police officer, Coop, who makes that connection. Anyway, Quincy knows about two other final girls, Lisa and Samantha. Lisa, she's communicated with, not in person, only by email or on the phone. And Samantha, she's never talked to or communicated with at all. Samantha has been off the grid for many years, and no one knows where she is. Quincy seems to have her life together at the start of this book. She seems happy. She's got a cooking blog or something, and she's got a boyfriend, and his her boyfriend is a lawyer, a defense attorney, and they seem to be getting on quite well. So despite this big tragedy, this horrific thing that happened in her life, she seems quite happy and quite stable. But then there's big news that rocks her world. Coop, the police officer who rescued her in her terrible moment, comes to visit her and tells her some shocking news. Lisa, one of the other final girls, is dead. They think it's suicide, but it's a big moment for Quincy because it just brings back all these memories and all these feelings that she was getting over or trying to get over in her life. So it kind of rocks her world and it sends her down a little bit of a spiral. But then there's a second shock for Quincy. There's a knock on the door and at the door is a woman called Samantha. And she says she's a Samantha, the final girl. Quincy has never seen her or spoken to her at all before. So Quincy believes her and lets her in. At first, just to come in to talk for a few hours, then stay for dinner and then stay overnight. But then Samantha becomes the guest that never leaves. Samantha's there for days, it seems, and it doesn't seem like there's ever a moment where Samantha is going to leave Quincy's apartment. But then Samantha is challenging Quincy to face certain things in a different way, to get angry about things, to do things and take risks that Quincy would never do before. And it's changing Quincy very much in this story. And all those changes are positive. We have Quincy going to extremes and taking risks that are quite dangerous, that could hurt other people. And then Quincy starts to wonder about Samantha, as well as this progresses in the story. Is Samantha who she says she is? Is she really the Samantha, the final girl? And I'll leave the plot there, because I don't want to give anything else away. And if I say anything else about the plot, it's going to ruin surprises and twists along the way. But those changes in the story are very sudden, they're very strong changes. I don't know that they always work for the characters because I think sometimes the changes in those characters are a bit too extreme and just a bit too un unrealistic. But I think those twists and turns after that moment are very strong indeed and very powerful. They're very well timed and they work so well. The conclusion for me, even though it had a great twist, I don't know that it worked totally. The thing I liked about it, despite the twist, is the feeling that it had. It felt like a 90s style slasher movie in their conclusion. And I enjoyed that about it. I enjoy those type of movies and I enjoyed that in this book. 
the overall atmosphere in this book chopped and changed a little bit as well. Sometimes it had that feel of that 90s slasher movie, sometimes it didn't. I would have preferred if that atmosphere remained through the whole book because I like that sort of feeling. I like those movies. I grew up watching those movies and I think that the author would have been better served, I think, to have that through this book. There is a split narrative in this story with past and present. Now, I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm trying to get over that and just accept it in books because it seems so many authors do it. In this book, the past narrative didn't always work, and that's because it's leading up to what made Quincy a final girl. But for me, most of those chapters are just quite boring. I didn't need all that lead up. I didn't need just all that nonsense going on before the big things happened. So for me, that past split narrative removes a lot of the atmosphere. I can see the author was trying to bring in the atmosphere of like a teen slasher in those past narrative stories, but it just didn't work for me. Some of the chapters did work in that feel, but that big lead up it was just too big. Even in movies, those teen slasher movies, the lead up isn't that big. So I think the author should have shortened those past narrative chapters, maybe taken some of them away and just given us the key moments, the key tense moments and thrilling moments right towards the start of that narrative. That would have made it a lot better and kept the atmosphere in the book. Quincy. Now, Quincy for me is the best written character in this story. With her changes in the story, you feel them. They do feel real to the character. I think sometimes they're too jarring, but they still feel real. They suited the book. There are moments in this book where I thought, oh, really? I rolled my eyes and thought, well, really, Quincy? But that's more plot than character. It's the situations the character's in that made me think that. The character is strong. The character is believable most of the time. And for me, the best written character in this book. Coop is the police officer that saved Quincy many years ago and is still in touch with Quincy. For me, he feels a bit flat. There's not much light and shade with Coop at all. There's no mysterious thing about him. There's no intrigue about him. It just feels one-dimensional and flat. And that was disappointing. I would have liked a bit more tension, suspense, a few questions about him, a bit of intrigue. We don't get that in the story. And, and if there's any changes in Coop in the book, they're surprising because they just don't make sense really with the character. Samantha, the stranger that turns up at Quincy's door and says, I'm Samantha, the final girl. I think the author had one thing in mind with this character make her as strange and as odd as you can. And the author did that, but it was too extreme in my view, and it felt one-dimensional. There was no light and shade with Samantha. Everything was just odd and extreme all the way through. I would prefer a bit more balance with this character, and it made her to seem too unrealistic. It just made her feel like a cartoon character in some ways. This book is not my favorite Final Girls style book, and not my favourite Riley Sager book. I rate it a 3 out of 5. There are things to like about this book though. The twists and turns are written so well and surprising. This author knows how to write great twists in a story. The characters are not so good for me. Characters feel one-dimensional, some feel too extreme. Quincy, our main character, is the best written in the story, but not perfect. I think the characters let this book down a lot. That's a shame because the concept of the story is worthwhile, it's quite strong, but it's just sometimes the characters and also that split in past and present narrative. Not so much that we have that split, but with the past narrative, with that long lead up to the actual thrilling moments of what happens to Quincy, that ruined the story a bit for me as well. On my channel, I review many thrillers. If you enjoy thrillers, check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to a video from another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.